When I was a kid, all I ever wanted to be when I grew up was a star. It didn't matter what kind. Rock star, movie star, comedy star, TV star, star athlete. Yes, it was all about me. I never quite made it to superstardom. I'm in my 50s now, and despite a few big-time successes here and there, I finally resigned to the fact I'll never be a superstar. But I figure there could be a bronze medal for me, sort of a consolation prize designation. Call me Phil Snyder, Dwarf Star. Growing up number six in a brood of ten was not easy. I constantly had to decide whether to get attention from my parents by showing off or stealing stuff. I was always in a hurry to grow up so I could move to Hollywood. My show business career began the same way it does for many big stars, in a church play. When I was younger, I did all my own stunt work. Here the camera caught me relaxing on the set of Kung Fu Cowboy after catching a bullet in my teeth. I was being typecast early as a cowboy. This was for my first color movie, Bouncy Chair Buckaroo. I was too young for spurs, so they fitted me with jingle booties. For those of you not familiar with the business, that's a stagehand there on the left. But I loved acting in westerns. In this scene from Recliner Rustler, I pretend to fall asleep in the saddle, awaiting the attack from banditos behind me. Little did they know, I have a cap gun hidden in my left cowboy boot. My mom, Bernie, was the perfect stage mother. Here she is handing me a roasted marshmallow from craft services after making sure it wasn't too hot. The Hollywood lifestyle was natural for me, as demonstrated by this hot tub scene. I'm enjoying a young adult beverage surrounded by my entourage. After years of doing big studio westerns, I decided to concentrate on more experimental, small, independent art films. Sure. That meant I had to show a little skin sometimes, and maybe it wasn't the smartest career move, but I'm proud of what we tried to do. Here's a dramatic scene from my Oscar-winning role as a five-year-old orphan who struggles to keep his poor family together, and eight is too much. The role helped me launch a side career as an underwear model for Fruit of the Loom. Sometimes I engaged in a little Coppola-esque nepotism, casting my siblings in my films. These are scenes from the melodrama, in which I played the hero. The beautiful heroine, my sister Mary, is having her curls done by her lovely maid, Sister Anne. A pounding at the door shatters their idyllic mood. The evil landlord brother, Mark Dastardly, threatens them with an overdue mort gag. Pay me the money. But I can't pay the money. Then I'll get my pound of flesh. Dastardly hadn't counted on the courage of Mary's former Navy SEAL's bodyguards, who were immediately in hot pursuit. Nor was he aware that the always impeccably groomed hero, Philip, would come a-calling. I was particularly proud of this move. And I'm off! This is where playing with Dad's tools turned out to be good practice. Long before Jackie Chan made the scene, I unleashed my karate chops of fatal fury. The real reason I went into showbiz was to get girls, but here I had to settle for my own sister. Even superstars have to pay for their own stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mine didn't cost a thing though. Got it online. It's not superstardom, but there's plenty of satisfaction in settling for dwarf stardom. Although I do have a long resume filled with day jobs, I shouldn't have quit. And, oh yes, I still get the girls in the end.